Today, I'm gonna to show you how you can start automating your repetitive work with Zapier. The Zap we're gonna build today is gonna to be very simple. It's going to run whenever there's a new row added to a specific Google Sheet. Then it will send an automated email to the addresses in that row. Start by creating a new Zap. You'll see a blank canvas with the skeleton of an automation, one empty trigger and one empty action. To set up a trigger, start by picking the app you want to use. For our example, that will be Google Sheets. You need to choose the trigger event. For us, that will be new spreadsheet row. You'll need to authorize Zapier to access the app in question. Typically, it just involves signing into the app however you normally do and confirming the permissions Zapier asks for. That's all we're doing right now for Sheets. With your app connected, you can now continue to the configuration screen. When you configure a trigger, you'll generally be telling Zapier which exact items it should watch for updates. In this case, that means picking the precise sheet and table to check for new rows. Then test the trigger. And now we see the retrieved test data. Next up, we can continue with this record and add an automated action in the Zap. First, you pick the app you want to use. For us, that's Gmail. Then you choose the action you want to automate. In this case, that will be sending an email. And once again, you'll need to authorize the app. Now we can configure the automated action. Again, the exact settings will depend on the app and action you're automating. But no matter what you're creating or updating with Zapier, you'll generally be filling out all of the information that you would provide if you're doing the same thing manually in Gmail or HubSpot or Shopify. So to send an automated email with Gmail, you'll need all the information you'd typically use to compose the email, a recipient, a subject, a body, and so on. You can enter text directly into fields like this, but you can also hit forward slash or the plus button to pull up dynamic data. These are all of the variables retrieved in the trigger or earlier steps in the automation. In this to field, I'm going to enter the email address variable retrieved in the trigger. This way, the email will be sent to whichever address is listed in the new row, instead of just going to a single static email address. Once your email is all set, you can proceed to the test window. Make sure you've chosen appropriate test data before continuing, like an email address you have access to. Everything here looks good, so I'll click test step. After a moment, Zapier says it was successful and a message was sent to Gmail. And if I open up my inbox here, I can confirm that there's a new email exactly as we configured it. Back in Zapier, you can click publish to activate your Zap. Now it will run whenever the trigger condition occurs.